So, Amazon offered to cover the cost of some watches for a review on this channel. But rather than doing that, I figured we'd grab some weird and wacky watches. You know the type that you see and think, why would anyone ever buy this? Yeah, I've cherry picked some of those, a selection of the weirdest watches on Amazon. Let's take a look at them and I'll give you my first impressions. And believe me, based on some of the ones I've chosen, you'll want to hang around. All right, first up, we've got this. Something that looks like it's come straight out of a child's goodie bag at a party. Yeah, it's got these weird balls all over it. Um, it says fashion watchy S with like a space between. And to be honest, I can't actually remember what this one even is. Oh, okay. Aha, yes. <laughs> so here we have a skimmy. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you might be able to remember back to a video I did where they copied the Casio A158. That one was okay, but why copy like a 10 pound watch? This one offered something a bit different though. You might be able to see here through the plastic, it says touch watch. Indeed, this appears to have some sort of touch capabilities, but we'll find out. All right then. You know what, oh, here we go, wow. I've accidentally started touching it and it's um, it's turned itself on. Well, on first impressions, it kind of does feel a bit like one of those fake Casios. You've got the, the folded link bracelet from the looks of it. Let's get this off. Oh, it's one of the annoying ones where it isn't just wrapped around, it's actually just a sealed tube that's being vacuum packaged. It's a great idea. There you go, let's get all the crap to one side. Um, yeah, it, it probably feels about what I was expecting, and, and to be honest, the main bulk of the watch and the case itself feels a little heavier than I was anticipating, probably. That being said, it doesn't feel like a good quality item. Let's have a look at this touch gimmick then. I'm not sure exactly how this works. No? Come on. What? Oh, there we go. So you just have to tap it like seven or eight times and then it, it, it seemingly works. This, oh. Here's me thinking that this bit where it says touch watch with a hand on it was just a sticker. But no. So you've got a little hand there that looks like it's straight out of Windows 98 stuck on your watch permanently. Fantastic. So yeah, okay, it seems to be responding a bit more now. And to be fair, actually, this display is very bright indeed. Has a weird fancy animation. And for it to be properly functional, you know what? It, it probably would have been better without that if it was a bit more responsive and just came on instantly. Because at the moment you have to you tap it multiple times and then you have to sit through an animation before it shows you the time. And it does stay on for long enough for you to read it, but there's seemingly no... What? There's no button. <laughs> Is it, how do you change the time? Is that? Oh, here we go. Okay, that's the second counter. Um, I can't believe I've been outwitted by an 18 pound item. But all in all, it's uh, probably not as bad as I expected. I'm just not sure who'd be using it, to be honest. Maybe it'd be something half decent for kids if you could work out how to set the time properly. All right, next up. Look what we have here. Peugeot. <laughs> <laughs> um, in all honesty, I'm not sure if this is in any way related to the Peugeot car maker given the font. I think that's a different font from what I remember. And I certainly don't remember seeing this double P on the back of any cars, at least in the UK. I'll put up some Wikipedia page about this brand if they're actually legit and not just some Chinese garbage. Okay, so it comes in a rather striking red container here that looks... Wow, it's like something from Insidious. Quite unusual. Oh, here we go, they're thanking me. Okay, ooh, free battery replacement program. If I register my watch. Very interesting. Apparently, Brooklyn, New York. Okay, so maybe they aren't um, Chinese. So here, P. Peugeot, it says inside. So yeah, it looks like they are a separate brand, perhaps. Established in 1957. Maybe I'm committing a horological crime here by not knowing them. <laughs> On first impression, rather unusual, actually. Vintage looking design with a domed crystal as well. Surprise, surprise, in the back it says, Japanese quartz movement, three bar water resistance. <laughs> yeah, in all honesty, the main bulk of the watch itself does feel cheap. Let's get it ticking. Yes, it actually works. So we're on to a start. 
And look, it actually lines up. Remarkable. Overall, with this kind of retro design, it certainly reminds me of something like a cheaper version of a Dan Henry. Both the 12 and the marker above it are skewed off to the side, which isn't great. Overall, not a complete disaster. Strap feels okay. About the same as the watch, if I'm honest, in terms of quality, so quite mediocre. Case finishing is okay. The transitions between the sections are quite sharp, but the quality of the brushing itself uh, could certainly uh, do some improvement. Yeah, not a complete disaster, but uh, certainly unusual. And with a fancy name like Peugeot Men's Business Casual Watch Steel Multifunction Watch for Men with Brown Leather Band and Easy to Read Number, it's sure to sell. Okay, if you thought that the origins of that one were pretty dubious, then just wait for this one. My goodness, what do we have here? Lancaster, Italia. <laughs> yeah, all the way from uh, Lancaster in Italy? What? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Lancaster's in the UK, but there you go. Maybe I need to come up with my own watch brand, just Stoke Italia. All right, as you can see, uh, this one didn't survive the journey very well and certainly doesn't sound particularly healthy. Oh dear, oh dear. What on earth has gone on? Oh, sh sugar. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, yeah, it looks like the lid has um, completely snapped away. Fantastic design. I'm sure the Italians came up with that one. And the watch itself is back to front slash sideways. Oh my God, now the internals are falling apart. <laughs> Who bought this to me, Colin McRae? Jeez. All right. So maybe that'll be a bit of an airfix job later. Who needs a Lancaster bomber when you got a watch? Oh my God, you know what? This screams straight away. Invicta. I mean, look at the size of this thing. It's a monster. It's a beast. That's got to be one of the thickest watches I have ever showcased on this channel. Wow, 16.3 mil. I think Andre the Giant forgot his watch. Okay, let's get some of this plastic off and have a feel. Well, when you're buying a watch this size, you'd want it to feel insanely heavy, and uh, I guess it does. Aside from the hands being completely misaligned, you know what? I actually don't think this one looks too bad. When it comes to quality, I'd say it's better than the last one. By no means is it uh, class leading. <laughs> yeah, all seems to be in working order. And all right, it's uh, screw down too which is nice. How much water resistance are they saying here? 300 meters? Well, uh, maybe we'll go with that. Hard proof mineral glass. Nice. Okay, so there's, you know, th th there's no way on planet Earth I'd be wearing something like this. Thank you, uh, Lancaster, Italy. I'm sure uh, this will make for a great gift. Phoebes, you got any bin bags? Okay, next up, we have, I can't remember, it. What even is this? Okay, it says Mast Milano on the um, on the back. So maybe another fake Italian. Let's see. Gosh, imagine not bringing a knife to an unboxing. Right. Unusual packaging here. What on earth is this? My goodness, I can't even remember ordering this. So this is a fashiony watch thing with only one hand. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's pop this out and see how this is supposed to work. I thought um, that touch watch earlier was the ultimate gimmick. Maybe this one takes the cake. Is it working? Well, while we wait for it to show some signs of life, hello, we can uh, discuss the strap. So it's got quick release tabs, which are really useful. So you can just lob this straight in the bin because this strap is absolute garbage. You can tell within a second this is... It says genuine leather. I don't know how they get away with this. This just feels like a piece of plastic to me. Oh, so there's a guide in the bottom that's uh, supposedly going to tell me how to use the watch. So let's have a quick look. God, that's such a gimmick. No. This just looks dead. It looks like your watch has stopped working. Anyone who didn't know would just think you had a useless piece of junk on your wrist, which is what this is to be fair. 
Okay, so rather than the 12 hours here, it's uh, 24 hours all the way round, starting at the six o'clock position for whatever reason. And it's effectively just an incredibly slow moving hour hand, really? I think that's just what it is. They just took off the minute hand instead. Well, that's it. I mean, talk about repackage something and sell it to you again. But of course, you can uh, you can still hear it ticking really loudly every second, which is fantastic. Waste of materials, man. Waste of materials. I need something to look forward to. And there's one here that I know I've got, which is highly rated by YouTubers, at least some YouTubers. So maybe there's some hope yet. The super cheap Star King automatic watch. Top brand luxury, I think it says there. Let's have a look. Now, if you've uh, subscribed to many channels on YouTube, you've probably seen this one before. I've heard that this offers some of the best value around, so we'll see. I've got to force the rest of this plastic off. First thing I notice, that is one of the, okay, no, that is the loudest rotor I've ever heard on an automatic watch. It's so loose, but it is an automatic watch, which in some ways is a leg up over the ones we've previously looked at. And by golly, it's actually working. The second hand is actually moving around the dial, although I can't be sure how accurate this will be. I suspect not very. Overall though, the case finishing, uh, basic, but probably slightly better than a couple of the others that we've seen. The bracelet is actually solid links all the way, what? Yeah, looks like solid links all the way down and solid end links even on the inside, which is uh, pretty rare to see. Come on, Seiko, can you beat this? I had to get this one shipped over from Amazon US because it's uh, not priced well in the UK whatsoever. Bracelet, um, while good quality, uh, you know, it's not very uh, conforming. You'll notice it's extremely stiff around the edges and it juts out much more. So the look to look length is actually a lot more than you might think, the, the effective look to look length at least. On wrist though, you know what? By far the best looking watch so far, but the dial itself is incredibly basic. There's really not much uh, going on there at all, although the printing is probably done to a better standard than I anticipated from ordering the watch. Wow, movement even hacks whatever Chinese thing is in the back of here, so that is, uh, yeah, unexpected. You know what? Definitely the best watch so far. Um, potentially not a complete waste of money, we'll see. And rounding out the list, we've got this. Yeah, a little quartz Casio watch. Why on earth is this in the roundup? Well, according to the listing, it's got an Invicta movement inside. So I figured, you know what? Let's just see if it's a, an Invicta movement in. Surely not. Let's have a look. Uh, I don't know if this picks up on camera, but there's gunk all over the back of the watch. And then there's just marks over the, the strap. And this was listed as new. This has been used. Hopefully not by someone with COVID-19 as well. Yeah, absolutely been used this for sure. Right, let's crack the back of this watch anyway and see what's inside it. This strange case back seems to be integrated with the strap somehow, so let's have a go. That was easy. You should grab one of these, by the way, if you're uh, using quartz watches a lot and need to take the backs off them. This is like a special one from Etsy I got a while back. Much better than the cheap rubbishy ones you can generally get on uh, sites like eBay, for instance. There we go. Wow, extremely easy. And what have we got? So it's a uh, Miyota inside. Uh, can't say that wasn't expected. Uh, certainly isn't Invicta branded. Maybe Invicta used the Miyota movement in some of their watches too, but that surely doesn't mean that you can just call this an Invicta movement. <laughs> yeah, this is just a basic cheap movement that frankly, should be in a watch like this. This is like seven or eight pounds in the UK, whereas you see these movements in watches at like 10, 15 times the price of this. Oh shit, I put it on backwards. So yeah, it seems funnily enough that um, Casio is the one that's let me down there, or maybe Amazon to be fair. First impressions, the Peugeot felt quite cheap. If the recipient's into construction, maybe that Lancaster one could make for a good gift, you know, so they can put the box back together again. I'd say the Starkings clearly the only one that, that's even worth considering. But yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on each of those weird watches. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.